The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. I'm Father Jonathan Rowe. I'm the parish priest at St. Michael's Anglican Church, the church in Kenmount Terrace. And I want to thank you for joining us for this service of evening prayer on Tuesday, the 3rd of March. I hope that these daily services of morning and evening prayer can be an opportunity for you to draw closer to Christ in this holy season of Lent. Before we pray, let's take some time to be still, to calm our hearts and to calm our minds, and to prepare to pray. The service of evening prayer will begin on page 20 in the Book of Common Prayer. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The psalms appointed for this evening are Psalms 47 and 48, beginning on page 389. O oh, clap your hands together, all ye peoples. O oh, sing unto God with the voice of melody. For the Lord Most High is to be feared. He is a great king over all the earth. He subdued the peoples under us, and the nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, even the glorious land of Jacob, whom he loved. God is gone up with a merry noise, the Lord with the sound of the trumpet. O oh, sing praises, sing praises unto our God. O oh, sing praises, sing praises unto our King. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. God reigneth over the nations. God sitteth upon his holy throne. The princes of the peoples are gathered together, with the people of the God of Abraham. For the rulers of the earth belong unto God. He is very highly exalted. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised, in the city of our God. His holy hill is a fair place, and the joy of the whole earth. Mount Zion of the uttermost parts of the north, the city of the great king. He hath made himself known in her citadels as a sure refuge. For lo, the kings of the earth were gathered and gone by together. They marveled to see such things. They were astonished and suddenly cast down. Fear came there upon them, and anguish as upon a woman in her travail. As when with the east wind thou breakest the ships of the sea. Like as we have heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God. God upholdeth the same for ever. We have thought on thy loving kindness, O God in the midst of thy temple. O God, according to thy name, so is thy praise unto the world's end. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. Let the Mount Zion rejoice, and the daughters of Judah be glad, because of thy judgments. Walk about Zion, and go round about her, and count the towers thereof. Mark well her bulwarks, consider her citadels, that ye may tell them that come after. 
for this God is our God for ever and ever. He shall be our guide for evermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson is written in the book Genesis, the 37th chapter, beginning at the 12th verse. Now Joseph's brothers went to pasture their father's flock near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. And he said, Here I am. So he said to him, Go now, see if it is well with your brothers and with the flock, and bring me word again. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. And a man found him wandering in the fields, and the man asked him, What are you seeking? I am seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, I pray you, where they are pasturing the flock. And the man said, They have gone away, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him afar off, and before he came near to them, they conspired against him to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild beast has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. And Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, cast him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand upon him that he might rescue him out of their hand, to restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with sleeves that he wore, and they took him and cast him into a pit. The pit was empty. There was no water in it. Here endeth the first lesson. The Office of Evening Prayer continues with the Magnificat on page 21. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second lesson is written in the Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter beginning at the fourteenth verse. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the Gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the Gospel. And passing along by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net in the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make, make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. 
and going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boat mending the nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants, and followed him. And they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority, and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this, a new teaching? With authority he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. Here endeth the second lesson. The service of evening prayer continues with the Nunc Dimittis on page 22. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O Lord, who for our sake didst fast forty days and forty nights, give us grace to use such abstinence that our flesh being subdued to the Spirit, we may ever obey thy godly motions in righteousness and true holiness. To thy honour and glory, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. 
Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all them that are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of thee the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness. Through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Light in our darkness we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work, or watch, or weep this night, and give thine angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for thy love's sake. Amen. I invite you to call to mind at this time, some moment, some time during this past day, in which you have been aware of the presence of God, a time when you have been aware of God's work in the world. Give thanks for this experience, and pray for the grace and strength and courage to join in with what God is doing. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord, to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Again, thank you for praying with us this evening. I hope you'll be able to join us tomorrow for morning prayer at 7 o'clock in the morning. Until then, be good. God bless. Bye-bye.